Hello True Believers, this is Bad What's Only and I have another bootleg Gundam review. And just a quick update here, my if you want to check out my fingers, there as you can see they're completely healed. It's about two weeks now. As you can see, there's there was like some scarring right there from this finger right here on that distal joint. And then I kind of crushed the the nail bed over here, but it looks like it's it's fine. My nails still look pretty good. So that's the update on my physical health. So doing fine. Just been busy with uh, busy with Hero, especially with his school. Especially now that his first year, his new school online is winding down, and he's finishing strong. So everything is good with Hero, except his lockdown. I it's impossible to it's for the next two weeks, or for next week anyway. This week's almost over. Halfway through this week. There's no gym use allowed, so we're going to have to try to figure out some other ways to exercise. We can jog just fine, but just the gym equipment is going to be uh, the challenge for the next week. So, but at least it's only another week and a half. But I I've, 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 was also considering maybe getting some gym equipment. Uh, we had gym equipment before, but we sold it because we weren't really sure what we, I was going to do next or what was going to happen. That was the tough part. So we were just kind of trying to lighten up to see what, trying to lighten up just to make sure, just to figure out since we didn't know what was going to happen to me. So one of the things that was really easy to unload was the gym equipment because everybody is like wants gym equipment so bad over here in the Philippines that people were making offers on it. So my gym equipment was lightened up. And I said, J go ahead, because I, I wasn't really thinking that much ahead. And if I needed gym equipment again, I figured I could I could get it again, but it just takes up so much space. And doing it, going to the gym, it has its pros and cons. So especially if it's close by, then it, there's a lot of pros. But anyway, we are doing this. It's been a while since I did a Gundam review. The last Gundam review was terrible. I didn't like it. It was with a model that I hated. I wasn't looking forward to doing it, but I did it anyway. So this one, I I wanted to do a decent one. I want to do a good one. So what we have over here is another TT Hongli. The last TT Hongli was terrible. This one is actually pretty good, pretty decent. I have to say, I this one, oh, I'll I'll. I'll I'll, I'll talk about it at the at the end when I do my my wrap up. In the meantime, let's do the first thing we got to go through first is the manual. So here's what the man. So it's the oh no, no I'm sorry the box. It's the Exia. Oh, what is it? Zero Gundam Zero Double. Anyway, it's the Xia Mobile Suit. And this is supposed to be like another close fighter ninja speed action. So if you look at the body, it's it's pretty sleek. It's supposed to be light and nimble. And as you can see, it is a TT Hongli. I don't read Chinese letters, but I recognize this symbol when you see it on the box. It's got this, it's this, uh, I, f I figure the first two letters up top is probably TT because it's the same and it's, but anyway, it's a TT Hongli. And I have to say, TT Hongli is probably in last place when it comes to the major bootlegs. If you compare it to Daban or Daban and Dragon Momoko, I would say Dragon Momoko is probably, and Daban are as a close tie, but sometimes depending on the model, Dragon Momoko kind of inches ahead because they kind of add additional features versus Daban, they just, completely straight out copy with good quality i have to say but just they don't add anything to it like dragon momoko does like for example dragon momoko with the tall geese they would add extra weapons or accessories versus daban just completely straight out copies and doesn't add anything extra but just gives you a very good bootleg price but anyway over here we have tt hongli we have a good bootleg price. I think this is probably like less than ten dollars. But if you would just look at the box, you've got this art, which is the same I think as the original. And then over here in the box, you can see his accessories over here, and you can see his uh, what his posing could be like with the accessories. So it's pretty good, pretty good looking, and that pretty much concludes on here. Go, he got him doing some more poses here. 
with his accessories. Pretty good. I think this is probably my first Gundam I ever bought the high grade. So before I discovered bootlegs, once I discovered bootlegs, I just kind of went hog wild because it's so, so dirt cheap. Like I said, this is easily could have been, if you retail the original, they, it could be anywhere between like $30, $40. But this, this is kind of an old, an old model. So I think it's probably less than $10. I could probably pretty much say $8, probably 400 pesos when I, off the top of my head, I can't really say from memory, you'd have to check yourself got this at mall 168 at divisoria 100 years ago did review on it talked about the prices and but the channel and the videos that was with it is gone now so but we already over over here we have the actual mobile suit itself and what's pretty nice about this oh well anyway i'll talk about that later let's continue with the manual I don't know why it's got a 23 over here. I'm sure somebody in the comments knows. But here's what the manual looks. Some people are interested in what the manual looks like. Yeah, you, so you can see, like, look at this beautiful art right there. You got this GN condenser. If I get the names wrong, please forgive me. I'm not a diehard fan. I just think I just enjoy putting models together regardless if it's like a car model, a, a airplane model, or a... So I remember when I was a kid, I enjoyed putting those those type of models together. Cars, boats, planes especially. And uh, they were relatively cheap. So here's the parts. GN drive. And you first put together the GN drive. And the first thing you put together is the head unit. I notice in this particular unit, uh, one of the rabbit ears is kind of loose. But that's a minor defect. You can just kind of glue it down pretty easily. So if you want to see what this looks like in detail, so go ahead and pause it right now. But it's pretty much just like the original. You're probably saying, but what's only, well, how do you know what the original is like? You don't even own the original. Well, if I had to, what, what would the point of making a, a different instruction manual if it's, it's exactly the same? So I'm sure this is exactly just like the original. And you might be interested in the inside art. So here against, uh, I forgot one of these grunt. I, I had one of these too. So here's, here, there, here it is in action. There's some story in, in some English. If you want to read it? I don't know if you can read that. Some paint guide here. It looks pretty, looks pretty good inside. The detail inside is pretty awesome. There's some people that have made complaints about this model, which I'll get into later, but let's finish the manual itself. I like the detail that's inside. I, when I do these, when I used to do these reviews before I went into prison, I would do, while I was building it together, I would do reviews in the middle so you could see all the intricate details and the articulations before you put them together. Because once you put them together, it's very hard for it to move. So, but right now, but since I actually put this together while I was in prison, I couldn't do that. I, I didn't have access to the internet or any any kind of electronic equipment. But I was able to smuggle this in, and the the tool that I had was the the the, the cutters, the plate cutters, the side cutters. I think that's that's what they're called. So I could cut these out of their plates. And this is what the accessory looks like. So you could see what the accessories are like, how it's put together, and. You can see some of the features it comes with it and here's how you put on the stickers like that and here's a picture of the finished product fighter Xia celestial being mobile suit i think i think it was called gundam zero and then it comes they became gundam double o the second season from memory like i said i did not see i probably saw bits and pieces of it but here's the actual suit itself and uh, before we get to the suit itself <laughs> let's get to the accessories as you can see over here uh, what did i just drop uh, i just dropped the the, uh, the 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 adapter i'm sorry the crotch adapter here it is so here's the 
the GN condenser itself. So if you want to pop the condenser off of his back, you can put it in here. But and then here's some extra clear parts, which I didn't use for some reason. I mean, because he already had extra clear parts. And what I dropped are is the crotch adapter, so you could put it in a stand. Like so, and then over here is a shield. And I think you could expand it and then you could retract it like that or expand. And here's the the adapter to put on the arm. So it's it's pretty solid. It goes on there pretty solid. So if you want the shield on, you can, but I don't really I like it the way it is over here because he's already got a shield with his with his gun and his gun blade over there. So it's just kinda redundant to have another shield but you could if you want if that's the look you're going for just like in this picture over here this is where with all his pretty much all his accessories and then over here we have his two gn swords so we got a long sword and a short sword and you'll notice it's got the three colors over here you got this kind of off white Let's see if it focus properly and you got this gray piece over here and you got this blue piece over here you got the white handle so it's not very metallic or futuristic looking for a blade but what happens over here is you, you see that hole right there that's how it attaches to actually his waist so he's got this waist ball that comes out if you pull this out the ball comes out then you can attach it through there through that hole and it looks pretty good and as you can see it's pretty straight so i was pretty impressed how straight this thing usually if it's like a really long piece like this you'll have some bends and curves or you know because of the plastic is normally where they cut costs is using cheaper plastic but for a cheap plastic and for a bootleg look how straight this blade is so i was pretty impressed by how straight it is when i snapped it together and i said oh look look how much straighter this one so here's a short blade so if you want them to sport the the dual wield sword, long and short blade. Here it is, it's available, or you could put it in his waist, but I I usually don't like it because he's supposed to be sleek and streamlined, so I don't really like a lot of accessories. Same thing with his other beam swords. As you can see over here, there's the two smaller ones with the beam effect, and then here we go, we got, if you want the two long ones. So there was like a scene in the, in the, in the anime where he was like stabbing i think ribbons gibbons or something like that where he used all these swords to <laughs> destroy him it was kind of funny he was kind of going wild and he pulled out all these the small swords short swords these swords just to stab the person with all his swords and it was kind of a funny it, it was kind of a funny exchange and if you i'm sure people are familiar with it so if you want to reenact that all the swords are there for you to pull out and stab his enemy he was pretty angry i think somebody close to him died and he wanted to take out revenge so he pulled out all these swords that are like attached to his body and back and i'll show you where it's supposed to be attached so and then i think this is like one of the gn covers if you like this goes in the back if you if you don't i don't know if you want to if you want to reenact one of the scenes one of the covers and let's get to the stickers themselves which i hate pretty much because it's here's the stickers I didn't use. You could I used some, and it looked, and as you could see, it looks terrible. But if you could see like the plastic edges around it, it when you put it on, it just looks cheap and crappy. It's not. It it doesn't go on like clear and nicely and neat like a water decal is probably the best. And then they gave you this crappy dry transfer, which I hate, which is a lot of work. And look how tiny the little details are i think most people skip this especially me and i understand why because uh it, probably for the original the dry on transfers stick on really well but me my experience with it is i put it on i tape it on and i rub it and i rub it like like i was you know self-pleasuring but it, it just wouldn't stay on like parts of it would just kind of not peel off and not go on properly and some people could do it well, but I, I never could do it with these bootlegs, but probably with the originals. And here's some foil stickers. I think I used some for his condensers, as you can see. And then they have a lot of available options. I think this is this one eye is supposed to be for the repair mode where half of his face is, is busted. 
So this is the stickers that are available. These are the ones I used, obviously, with the condens condensers, and we'll check that out when we actually get to the actual unit itself. So here we are, and I don't know what this piece is. It looks like a landing gear. It might be from this or some other, but anyway. So that's that. That's for the accessories. And let's get to the actual mobile unit itself, the mobile suit itself. Now, some people have complained about the ankle issues and how this thing will stand some of the popular people that love Ixia, like Prime, what was, what's, what's his name? What's her name? I think it's a her, uh, Prime 92. I mean, that was kind of a discussion that's been had because we don't know exactly what who Prime 92 is. And we don't really, I mean, you don't really see a lot back, back of the OG original days, uh, you don't really see too many female Gundam collectors. So there were, and, and Prime 92's voice is kind of low and scratchy. So it, it could be a feminine guy's voice or a masculine girl's voice. So anyway, I think it's a girl. So back to the actual unit itself. So here is Ixia, and I have to say the plastic quality has relatively been good compared to the last one. The last, the last review I did of Strike, that one was horrible. This one is actually feels and looks and snaps together. I mean, if you look at the, I mean, you'll have, I don't have the original, but the color variations, look at the color, look at the detail, look at the, Look at the vents, the yellow, the red, the GN clear parts, even this GN belt over here. It looks pretty good. It's it's probably 90% as close as the original for the for you're talking about a third of the price. You're talking about 90% copying and only paying only a third of it. So if this thing costs $30 and less than 30%, then you're getting a pretty good value and you're getting a, and I and I had a great experience with it. And look at how well it came together, even with my rudimentary tools that I had when I was in prison. So I put this together, enjoyed it a lot. And with my limited space, I mean, I had all the, I was gonna say limited time, but limited space and limited equipment. Let me see if I can zoom in on his face, so. So let's start out, I guess, with his, some of the details in his face. As you can see, the stickers, I was I put it on and look at his face and look at even the the quality. If I could zoom. The quality of the side vents. Look at the yellow coming through on his face. And look at the stickers. Hold on, maybe I should get this thing, this background, because it wants to focus on the background. Let's see if I can get it to focus on the foreground here. There. So look at the details on his face. Oh, it still wants to focus in on my and I'll pull back. But anyway, I put the sticker over there. Up there, there's a sticker. I think it's a foil sticker, and I put the sticker on his eyes. But it pretty it's it does pretty good of staying and you can't really see the little plasticky parts of it. And there's a LED. I think there's an LED inside light here. So, but I opted for the sticker. I'm not a big fan of the LEDs and look at the, the ears. So he's got, so even this, look how straight this antenna is, this yellow antenna and the color. So you could actually push that down. So it's not a, it's not in the way like that. And then look at the ears. You could see this the sticker. I applied the sticker inside there. So it, yes, it's probably because it's a bootleg. It's kind of hard to see the little letterings. It's supposed to say GN something. But look at his V antenna. Pretty cool. If I could get it to freaking focus, then maybe I'm, I'm pushing the button. I'm pushing right on it to get it to focus on the... But let's look at the back. You could see the sticker. I put that sticker in the back. So not that many nubbish problems. So, and then I think, and then here's another, those GN belt, clear belt. It's supposed to be, it's not, it's supposed to be not as transparent as this, 
but it's there. So they got pretty much the detail just like the original. Yes, they use cheaper parts, cheaper plastic, but it's still not that bad for what you're paying for. You're getting a lot of value for what you're paying for. So this thing over here actually, so you could look at the GM, this, this thing kind of, this thing can open up and actually you can slide this out and it has like an LED I think inside, but I'm not gonna bother sliding it out. But this, this, this opens up right here and then you can, but I'm not gonna bother. And it, it's supposed to pop out also. Come on, focus. And if you want, you get there's like little details in there that you can panel line, so you could see it much better. You see the little grooves inside there. If you want, I didn't really have. I mean, I could have panel lined it in prison, but sometimes the grooves are not well defined. They're not as detailed, so it just kind of gets kind of washed out. It doesn't. The the wash doesn't stay inside the groove, so it looks kind of not as crisp the lines are so I usually don't panel line bootlegs unless I see the unless it's really detailed like with the Daban then I'll do that but when it comes to TT Hongli I hardly do that. So look at this thing here. This thing actually moves as you could see and this actually comes down also so you could see the pilot inside. Check that out. So you can see the pilot in there from that angle so that's kind of neat so you don't have to pull anything out so this there's a sticker inside this thing also and it's supposed to have some lettering but hard to see but you can see the pilots in there and he's got his little screen monitor I think you can move that monitor up there uh, up in a way so you could see him better but you can see a little glimmer of him that like white coming out and as you can see look at how nicely done the detail is inside the vents in there the yellow i uh, it 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 looks fine as you can see there's no gapping it just shuts pretty good almost just like the original sorry for this camera is just not agreeing with me too well or maybe the light there you go so you could appreciate the color. Look at how nice blue is the color, the gray, the little shoulder belts. It looks pretty good. And let's look at the arms. I mean, let's look at the shoulders themselves. As you can see, it's got this belt on it. And I really, this is usually kind of tricky and complicated putting that belt together. But as you can see, it didn't give me any problems. But it's just a peg and hole. And this is where you actually peg the accessory on the one of the handles the blade handles right there but i didn't put it on but this one you could tuck away uh like so as you can see there's not that much gapping there's a gap there i uh, maybe i could have done a better job of like on this side but it's not that bad i probably could push it together a little bit more but for a bootleg that's pretty good it's not that noticeable i mean there's not that much compared to that one that one really fits together, but if I really wanted to force this, maybe I could. But as you can see, with the other parts, it's it snaps together pretty good. The gapping, the the quality, as you can see, it's not that bad for a TT Hongli. Like I said, the TT Hongli is the cheapest. Maybe there's a gap there that's hardly noticeable, but it's in the but it's in the back. So that that gapping over there, maybe uh, because of fit. And finish issues you'll, you'll have things like that with the bootleg but not so with the original I mean I probably could have glued it together so that's probably my solution there's hard it's harder work but I don't know if I had glue available at that time I gotta probably glued that together so it wouldn't come so it wouldn't spread apart like that but it's in the back it's not that noticeable so I didn't bother and here's the other the other places where you put the 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 blade handle so it just kind of stores it right there you take off the fx part and store it right there and it kind of uh, moves up and down and then i think yeah bends to the side also it turns to the side if you want uh, yeah. like that <laughs> so it also but 
I don't really want to mess with it right now. That's the problem with bootlegs is, is uh, the plastic is brittle. So if you force it too much one way or the other, like so, it might. But it does articulate. As you can see, it'll twist to the side to get the blade handles out of the way. If that's what you want, I think. Uh, but I, I don't really like it. I usually just like it without. He doesn't really have the sword handles sticking out of his butt or sticking out of his shoulders when he's like running around, walking around because it kind of disrupts his streamlineness. So that's, but I just want to let you know that the blade handles can be put here. It could be put here in the shoulders. And you know, these ones over here, you can see there's four of them like that for the people who are not familiar. There's four of them and these two short one and long one could be put on his side over here. So this pops out and then the little ball comes out and then you can attach the blade handle right there. Okay, so pretty much the back, you already saw the GN condenser. You could take this apart and this actually pulls out, which I'm not going to do. And you could put a light, I think there's an LED in there and it's supposed to light up like part of his chest, but it's covered with sticker and yeah, and then, so it looks, it looks terrible. It looks crappy, so it's not worth it. I mean, if, if you really want to do it, it, the possibility is there, but it's a lot of work for very little, very small amount of light that actually comes through so let's so now that we got his shoulders out of the way i don't think his shoulders do much other than i think this kind of lifts up a little bit or i don't think it separates or does anything else or any other gimmick if, even if it did i wouldn't mess with it but we can look at it from the side over here so you could see the little belt how it inserts over there it's pretty sturdy it's pretty stable and it just inserts to his his arm like that and then before we get to the his his main sword or his main blade, we can look at the arm itself. So there's another clear part right there with a sticker, and maybe because of the bootleg, the the green piece, you can bar barely see the black sticker inside, or maybe because this is in focus. But you if you can use the green piece or the green the green part or ah, sorry the light is getting dark or the clear so you have the clear over here but i opted for the green so but if you want the clear so like this and then you could use these type of stickers i don't know exactly which color you're supposed to use but once you st stuck it on then you kind of stuck with it so i just stuck with what i think is recommended is the green the black sticker with the green clear plastic. So there's a green clear, supposed to be green clear plastic there, but there's a black sticker inside, so it's very hard to see. And I think that's a sticker right there. Yeah, that is a sticker right there. There's a gray sticker there. So to make, to break up that white. So the gray, you could see the gray out here. And sorry if it's not focusing properly, I'm trying my best to kind of spot focus it. So, I think uh, and then you could do look at it, you could do the shake test. There's nothing falling out of it. So it's pretty solid. And then let's get to the it's just the ankles. As you can see, you have to it's not very stable. I think that's a, even a complaint in the original. But let's take a look at the gun blade itself. As you can see, he's got this his gun, his pistol right here, and it's attaches attaches to the forearm like that. So it's pretty solid. And there's it's articulates right there so it has a little bit of movement a little bit of give and here's what as you can see here I, I put the sticker on like that but it looks like crap because over time so i decided not to and like ah oh, it just it just covers up the nice plastic and with crap stickers but you don't want to cover up the nice plastic with crap plastic, then you got crap. And as you can see, I even tried to do it on his gun blade and this swings out to straighten out. But I, I like it like this, where it's kind of out of the way and not poking you in the face. But as you can see, look at that. It's not really that, you could see the outline of the crappy plastic. So it's got two shades of gray, a dark gray and a light gray. Looks pretty good. And then you can see it this thing will swing out like i said it's a pretty solid connection on the arm one of the best gundam weapons out there one of the best designs is this 
Uh, I'm sure there's a name for it, but I just call it the gun blade for now because there's a gun and then there's a blade attached to it. So I usually have it, have him holding it like this or when he's flying around or just cruising around, he just, he usually has it in this position. So let's look at the waist. And I already told you that the waist or over here in the, in that area right there, this is where you can have your, your swords stored. And here is his front skirt. He's got this little red piece over here and it's got this gray. Looks pretty good. Colors look pretty good. Your traditional. And look at his waistline. It's pretty nice and thin. And as you could see, there's nothing wrong with the fit and finish. I think I had some trouble with it. Just kind of because when you're put, it's like when you're putting like multiple structures together. And if you make a misstep along the way, then putting it together uh, for the final parts, you can have some gapping here and there, especially like this red piece right there. I, and uh, as you can see, I had no problem getting it to squeeze together. Maybe I have pretty good technique at the time or I developed enough experience that I can pretty much shave and pare down the connection points so they will fit together properly. But versus some beginners, they don't know how to kind of experiment with it. But as you can see, it's possible with just your side cutters, even in prison, you can put together and have pretty good results. I'm happy with the results anyway. So let's go to the leg. And as you could see in the leg, you got the, the little GN belt over here. I know in the perfect grade, this thing lights up. And if you look at the, I like his legs, he's nice and beefy and, and especially his calves, his thighs over here. It's, it's a, it's a well, it's a nice proportion, good design is, his knee, he's got this, uh, this part over here. When this this part over here, if you don't get this thing exactly right, is not going to squeeze in properly and lock on like that. As you can see, I had no problem, and there's no gap being there because this this is one piece over here, and this thing kind of clamps it together. The design, so as you can see, there's no problem. This is double jointed. There's one joint over here, and there's one joint over there. So the knee will give you a really good bend articulation wise and freaking focus, focus, please. Even I'm having problems looking at it through the, the phone, the camera phone. And as you can see, he's got these, these ankle covers that kind of move also. And you can see this clear plastic over here has got a, a black sticker inside. So it's pretty dark. It's it's pretty cool. It it stands out really well. I mean, the, the, all the colors go well, even though that's a kind of a black. So it's a it's a green clear plastic with a black sticker inside with some lettering inside that you really can't read. But I'm sure if I really tried looking in there really hard and get to focus properly, maybe it could happen. Maybe it won't. But anyway, you get the idea. And here, let's go to his feet and his legs. And it's pretty good. As you can see, his legs, it it's fine. I look at the detail underneath. Of course, they usually always put in. And I wonder if these, and he's got like some toe bend also. So what a, that's what it looks like through the crotch. I put a cover on it, but you can take that cover off so you can have the, put the, oh no, wait, I have the adapter. There's an adapter so you can stick it on a stand. That's what the bottom looks like. And as you can see, if I didn't tell you this was a bootleg, you would have a hard time determining if this was original or not. I mean, the, the people, the experts, or the ones who have a lot of experience with this, <coughs> probably could tell right away by the color, or especially by the color of this, this GN belt, they could probably tell that it's a bootleg right away. But for the regular person, for the lay person, or for the, it's, it's, you can barely tell the difference. The quality of the plastic, you're not going to notice how bad it is until you start articulating it and moving it around and it starts falling apart and breaking apart. It's almost disintegrating. Then, yeah, you can tell that. But if you, once you put it together, putting it together, and if you have gentle hands and you know what you're doing in terms of getting it to properly fit together because it's like a puzzle. And if you don't get it right the first step, then the next 
steps, three or four steps when you're putting it together, it's not going to, it's kind of has this domino effect. But as you could see, even with my uh, neophyte skills or minimal skills in prison with minimal tools, I was able to put something as beautiful as this. I really enjoyed the engineering. Well, I really enjoyed putting it because I had something to do and something to enjoy even while I was in prison. So that that uh, the this, this, this several months, several years, years I was there, I was able, this was the fastest time, like a week would go by and I didn't, I didn't, I didn't even feel it when I have one of the, when I had one of these. So I think I had like 15 models together and I had like 15 weeks where the time went by really fast that I put together when I had these things It really saved my life. So I'm, I was very happy with this. And do I highly recommend it? As you can see, absolutely. For the price, I don't recommend a lot of TT Hongli's. I didn't really recommend the Zaku from TT Hongli, and I didn't really, and then I definitely don't recommend the Strike Gundam. But for this one, I highly recommend as for the Exia. Yes, you're gonna have fit and finishing issues, but if you know what you're doing, you should have uh, good results. And if you're into kit bashing and if you're into customization, then I definitely should pick one of these. If you need extra parts for your original Exia, then I definitely highly recommend picking one of these up, TT Hongli. I don't know if there's, I don't know, there is, I don't know if there's a Dragon Momoko version or a Dabin version of this, but the TT Hongli, as you can see, they were able to do a pretty good version of their, uh, pretty, pretty good bootleg version of their own, as you can see. Anyway, if you have any questions or comments, please just let us know. Like I said, I got this at uh, Mall 168 in Divisoria, very cheap. So if you're in the area, you haven't had one, I highly, I suggest you pick one up and let me know what, and experience the joy of putting it together yourself. Anyway, this is Bev, it's only doing another Gundam review, bootleg Gundam review. If you like it, give it a like, give it a comment, and give it a subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next review. This is Vendetta. Thanks for watching.